In the previous video, we looked at how to use the get element by ID method in JavaScript to return an element on a web page that has a has an ID that we've specified. Uh, and so, in the examples that we looked at, we had um, a paragraph of text that had a specific ID, um, and then in our JavaScript code, we would grab that paragraph of text by referring to its ID and then changing its uh, we changed its contents. Uh, the text uh, and then we changed its color and things like that. Um, now the get element by ID method is uh, the way that that method works is that we need to specify an ID and on a web page IDs are meant to be um, unique. They're meant to only be used once on the page uh, for just one element, one instance of an element. Uh, but what if we wanted to uh, return multiple elements on a page. We wanted to grab multiple elements on a page and change their contents or change their appearance um, in one go. Well, that's where we can use classes instead of IDs. So on a web page, uh, an ID should be unique and only be used once on a page. But with classes, we can um, use them as many times as we want. We can create multiple elements and give them the same class name. So here in the HTML, um, I've added some paragraphs here using the P element um, containing some text. I've got four paragraphs here and they all have the same class name. So I'm no longer using an ID. Um, I've given them a class called my text to each one. Now I've added a button down the bottom here and it has an on click method, uh, sorry, an on click event which calls a function called change text. So that's what the page looks like at the moment. What I want to do is when this button is clicked, I want to change uh, all of this text here. Um, change the contents, maybe change the color, um, but they all have the same class name. So now in the JavaScript code, instead of using the get element by ID method, I'm going to use another method called get elements by class name. All right, so firstly, I'm going to create that function here that's called when the button is clicked. So I'll say function change text. And in this function, um, now what we'll do is create a variable called my text, and we'll call that method the get elements by class name method. And you can see when we start typing get, we can see we've got a few options here. Um, we could in the previous video, we used uh, get element by ID, but here we're going to use get elements by class name. All right, and in parentheses, in between quotation marks, I'm going to specify the name of that class, which is my text. Okay, and that line with the semicolon. Now, in the previous video, when we used the get element by ID method, we could then go and change the contents of that element by saying, for example, my text dot in a HTML equals, and then whatever we wanted the text to now say. But because there's more than one instance of the paragraphs with this class name, rather than just one paragraph with an ID, um, each of those instances or each of those paragraph elements that have that class name are actually in an array or a list. So there's four of them here four paragraphs that have that class name my text uh, and when we use the get elements by class name method they're now being uh, stored in an array or a list so we need we could either just uh, refer to one of them right uh, or we could use a loop uh, a for loop to go through each uh, each of those elements that has that class name and get the information from them or modify them or manipulate them in some way all right if we just wanted to refer to one of them, then we could do this, my text, and then in square brackets, just like if we're referring to an array, which we've looked at in um, previous videos, we can just specify the index of the element. So for example, if we just want to grab the first paragraph or first element that has that class name, my text, then we could specify zero. If we wanted to get the second one, um, then we could specify one. And if we wanted to get a third one, we could specify two and so on. So if we just want to change the very first paragraph, then we could say my text and in square brackets zero dot 
in a HTML equals, we could say something like you clicked the button. All right, after saving all of that, we could go back to the page and just refresh it. Now, if we click this button, we can see that only the very first paragraph uh, is changed there. All right, if we change this to um, two instead and refresh the page, then we should see that the third one is modified when we click the button and there it is. Okay, so here we're referring to each of the elements um, by an index, each of the elements that are in this array or list um, that we've got from uh, grabbing those elements by their class name. All right. Now um, we might, we could, sure, we could just modify each of those elements individually by referring to the index like that in square brackets. But if we want to do all in one go, we want to change all of the text in one go, then we can use a loop. So what I'm going to do now is create a for loop. And we'll create a variable called i, which is going to be the counter. Um, it's going to go through each of the elements in this array, starting from zero, or index zero. And until, so this loop will keep repeating uh, while i is less than the length of that array called my text. So this is basically an array containing all of the elements that have that class name my text. All right, so this loop will keep repeating while i is less than the length of that array. So however elements there are in there, which there are four. Um, and then each time the loop repeats, we'll increment that counter i by one. Okay, we'll add some curly braces there. And in here, instead of specifying a particular index in the square brackets, we're just gonna specify i. My text dot inner HTML equals you clicked the button. Okay, so each time this loop repeats, i is going to increase by one. So in the first iteration of the loop, it's gonna be my text zero dot in HTML equals you click the button. Loop will repeat, so i will increase by one. So now it's gonna be my text one, and then the loop will repeat again, It'll be my text two, repeats again, my text three, and then the loop will stop because the counter i will become a value greater than or larger than the length of the array. Okay. So save that code, go back and refresh the page. Now, when we click the button, all of these uh, paragraphs change, all of the inner HTML of all four paragraphs change. Um, and we can do just like we looked at in the last video, we can do other things other than just changing the inner HTML. We can change the, oops, we could change the color if we wanted to. All right, so that is how we can use the get elements by class name method in JavaScript. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.